is correct. The famous saying, I think, conveys the message that how important our health is. But let me ask you a question. Are we taking good care of our health? The answer would be a big no. Why this happens? The answer is clear to us as pure water because of our changing lifestyle in this busy world. To add oil to the fire, we are under the threat of a pandemic too, COVID-19. There comes the relevance of yoga and meditation. Yoga doesn't curtail you from any of your day-to-day -day activities. On the other hand, provides you peace of mind and body. Saving a little bit of your time and spending it for yoga can work wonders in your life. I'm sure as per many feedback. So we are inviting you all for a detailed presentation on this yoga day. We would like to welcome you all to this webinar on behalf of Shrivigiri Vidyanagedan. I would like to invite respected principal, vice principal, teachers, parents, and my dear friends to this webinar. Now, I invite our vice principal, Archana Ma'am, to share her thoughts on this program. Good morning, everybody. So first of all, wishing a very happy yoga day. So, as we know, India is known to be a country that, uh, that gave the world of tremendous discoveries and intellectual treasures. And we know that yoga is one such gift that has benefited the entire world and continues, still it continues, continues to amaze us with its cognitive and that, uh, that physical health benefits. So of course, yoga is something that needs to be an integral part of our daily lives as it feeds our soul. We know we are providing food to our body for different purposes, for, for the growth, for the maintenance, for getting immunity and all. So our soul is also requires some energizer that we can provide through the practice of yoga. But actually what is happening, we know we, are, we learn yoga for one or two months or one or two weeks and we know almost all asanas and all. And we are telling that we are not getting time to practice continuous, continuously in our life or during our busy schedule. So that is not good. Actually, we, we have to make it as our routine activity of, of our life. And because during this time, the inner peace, mental health and physical fitness is very important during this testing time, during this pandemic times. As civilians, we need to stand out from the crowd by attaining harmony with our body, mind and soul. And I really appreciate the effort, effort as well as initiatives taken by the 10th standard team for conducting this webinar. And we are regularly waiting for this. And I wish you all the very best for, your, for the success of your program. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, let me invite Krishna Pradeep of class 10C to give a brief explanation on general health. Pleasant morning greetings all. The day is special as we celebrate International Day of Yoga. Assembly. As it is the longest day when the sun is out at its most compared to every other day of the year. In Jack's ancient tradition, yoga is a physical, mental, and spiritual practice which embodies unity of mind and body, thought and action, restraint and fulfillment. Yoga helps in increasing flexibility, muscle strength and body tone. Thus, improving respiration, energy and vitality. A powerful mindfulness practice which reduces stress and lowers blood pressure, keeping the joints healthy and thus helps us to make healthier life choices. Increase mood and concentration, improve injury recovery time and reducing risk of re-injury, relieving symptoms of asthma and arthritis. A set of specific exercises called poses combined with specific breathing 
techniques and meditation principles are the building block of yoga. The beauty of yoga is that you don't have to be a yogi or yogini to reap the benefit. Whether you are young or old, overweight or fit, yoga has the power to calm the mind and strengthen the body. There are several types of yoga and many disciplines within the practice. The overall philosophy of yoga is about connecting the mind, body, and spirit. There are many styles of yoga and one should choose a style based on their goals and fitness level. We can practice the sun salutation, Surya Namaskar, as an exercise incorporating a flow sequence of the 12 gracefully linked asanas. The set of 12 asanas is dedicated to the solar deity Surya. Now, let me conclude by changing our lifestyle and creating consciousness. It can help in healthy well-being. Let us all work towards adopting an International Yoga Day. Thank you. Now, let us watch the demonstration video by Adra Jaydev. Surya Namaskar. One, Pranam Asana. Two, Hasta Uttan Asana. Three, Pada Hasta Asana. Four, Ashu Sanjan Asana. Five, Danda Asana. Six, Ashtanga Namaskara. Seven, Bhujangasana. Eight, Parvadasana. Nine, Ashwa Chanchalanasana. Ten, Padahastasana. Eleven, Hasta Uttanasana. Twelve, Pranamasana. Thank you, Krishna and Adra, for explaining us how yoga keeps us general health. Now, we are moving on to thyroid problems. Today's program discusses not just one, but many problems faced by people around us, each of which will be explained one by one. Thyroid problems are faced by many, especially women in our society. Intake of too much medicines as part of thyroid treatment may harm your body. So, let this be our first topic of discussion, how yoga helps in solving thyroid problems. Now, let me invite Sri Badra of Class 10B to explain about thyroid problems. Good morning to one and all. Today, I am here to present a short speech on thyroid problems and yoga. First of all, what is thyroid? Thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland that sits low on the front of the neck that belows the Adam's apple in front of the windpipe. It has two lobes which is connected to a bridge named isthmus in the middle. Brownish red in color, the thyroid is rich with blood vessels. Nerves, important for voice quality, also pass through the thyroid. Thyroid secretes several hormones, collectively known as thyroid hormones. One of the main hormones that is secreted by thyroid glands includes thyroxine, also known as T4. The thyroid hormones act throughout the body, influencing metabolism, growth, development, and body temperature. During infancy and childhood, thyroid hormones plays a crucial role in brain development. Because of the changes that we introduce in our day-to-day -day life, there are many problems related to thyroid. 
some of these problems may be inherited some may be due to genetic abnormalities or some may be due to the changes that we introduce in our day to day life some of the thyroid disorders includes goiter thyroiditis hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism thyroid cancer thyroid nodule thyroid storm etc goiter is a general term for thyroid swelling goiters can be harmless or can represent an iron deficiency or a condition associated with thyroid inflammation called hashimoto's thyroiditis thyroiditis is the inflammation of thyroid gland usually from a viral infection thyroiditis can be painful or have no symptoms at all thyroid cancer is an uncommon form of cancer thyroid cancer is usually curable surgery radiation and hormone treatments may be used to treat thyroid cancer hyperthyroidism is the excessive thyroid hormone production and hypothyroidism is a low production of thyroid hormone thyroid nodule is a small abnormal mass or lump in the thyroid gland thyroid nodule are extremely common few are cancerous they may secrete excess hormones causing hyperthyroidism or causes no problems thyroid storm is a rare form of hyperthyroidism in which extremely high thyroid hormone level causes severe illness to human body all these thyroid disorders are vast on their own which needs regular medical treatment but apart from medicines some yoga asanas like ushtrasana and malasana have proved to be beneficial in reducing hypothyroidism ushtrasana is also known as camel pose this pose too can stimulate the thyroid gland by stretching the neck and increasing blood circulation into the gland practicing this yoga pose for thyroid can also helps in relieving issues of the spine it also helps in bringing relief to people suffering from asthma however if you are a person suffering from hernia or ulcers it is better to avoid this yoga asana malasana also known as fish pose make your back arch in a way that it increases the blood circulation into the thyroid gland this pose stretches the neck and throat and stimulate the thyroid gland it relieves a lot of tension in the area this pose is done by inverting the head this encourages the blood flow to the thyroid gland and is thus good for people suffering from hypothyroidism this pose also helps in maintaining health of abdominal muscles and spinal column yoga increases blood circulation in our body it helps to reduce stress anxiety and tension so let's do and practice yoga daily now let's watch the yoga demonstration of malasana and ushtrasana by fasna thank you and have a fabulous day i am going to demonstrate how to do malasana first lay down on the floor bring the feet together place your hands with palms turned down lift your chest up by pushing the elbows into the ground and throw up the head back so to touch the floor the chest in the same arched position breathe slowly and deeply try to remain in this position for 1 minute or so so to come out of this position lift the head and lower the upper body to the floor ushtrasana stand on the knees keep the knees and feet together lean in backward direction reach the right heel ushtrasana stand on the knees keep the knees and feet together lean in backward direction reach the right heel with the right hand and the left heel with the left hand 
Relax the body and muscles of the back. Stay in the same position for as long as you find it comfortable. Then release the hands from the heel one by one and return to the starting position. Thank you Sri Badra and Fasna. It was a wonderful presentation. Now I am sure that all of you have learned about the causes of thyroid problems and how to solve them. Now, the main problem faced by the people required from COVID-19 is lung disorders and stress. There are also many others who are facing the same issue. So, our next topic is how to manage lung disorders and stress by yoga. This topic will be presented by Bhavya CS of class 10A. I invite her to present it. Good morning all. Today, I am here to deliver a speech related to World Yoga Day. Yoga is a physical, mental and spiritual practice which energizes our body and mind. Yoga plays an important role in preventing lifestyle diseases. To manage disorders and stress by the organ, which function by expanding Sorry for the disturbance. Let us watch Lens the video the of lung disorder. See the Pantasana. First, lay down on the floor. Now, gently bend your knees and place your feet on the ground. Place your hands on the floor, parallel to your body with your palms flat on the ground. Inhale, lift your body off the floor, push up with your pelvis, lower back and feet. Roll in your shoulder and try to touch your chin to your chest without moving your head. Inhale and exhale slowly and try to maintain the pose for 30 to 60 seconds. Now, get down and lay flat on your back again. Relax for a few seconds and repeat. Pranayama Sit in Patmasana. Use your right hand fingers to do the breathing exercise. First, close the right nostril with your right thumb. Inhale deeply through the left nostril. Close the left nostril with the right finger of your right hand as you release the right nostril. Exhale slowly through your right nostril. Keeping the left nostril closed, Inhale deeply through your right nostril. Exhale out of the left nostril. Repeat the process 10 times, gradually increasing the number of repetition. I think Bhavya has solved her network issue. She will explain us about this topic. Once again, good morning to all. Today, I'm here to deliver a speech related to World Yoga Day. Yoga is a physical, mental, and spiritual practice which energizes our body and mind. Yoga plays an important role in preventing lifestyle diseases. Now let's see 
how to manage lung disorders and stress by yoga. The lungs are a part of primary respiratory organ which functions by expanding and relaxing thousands of times every day by bringing oxygen and releasing out carbon dioxide. It is a vital organ for our respiration, hence it is important to care our lungs. One of the shocking facts is that lung diseases are the leading cause of death in the world. Lung diseases are caused by air pollution, smoking and infections. Genetics also could be a reason for lung diseases. With the help of yoga, we could prevent lung diseases up to a limit. Sedu Bandhasana, also known as bridge pose, is one of the yogasana which is very beneficial for people who are suffering from respiratory problems. This pose opens the chest region which helps the lungs to fill in more air. It also helps to regulate breathing as well as strengthen your lungs. While practicing this pose, it creates lots of pressure in the lung region that results in the expansion of lungs and thereby prevent you from respiratory problems. Apart from reducing lung diseases, Siddhu Bandhasana also has several other benefits like it improves digestion, it helps to strengthen the backbone muscles and also to reduce stress and anxiety. Today, stress is an inevitable part of our life. Majority of the people around us are facing the problem of stress. Feeling of stress could be triggered by the things happening in our life, which may involve being under lots of pressure, having more responsibilities, or facing big changes. This all could be a reason for stress. With the help of yoga, we could prevent stress because yoga promotes relaxation, which is natural opposite of stress. Pranayama is one of the yogasana, which is very beneficial for people who are suffering from any health related issue. Studies have proven that pranayama it is the regulation of bioenergy which activates the nice cells that help to cool the mind. Thus, pranayama is also effective for stress. From all this above, we could understand that yoga is the best medicine that can help you, that can help you to keep healthy. Now, by practicing yoga daily, you will become mentally and physically fit. With this, I'm concluding my words. Thank you and have a nice day. Sorry for the inconvenience caused in between, but it was indeed a very informative presentation. Thank you, Bhavya and Fasna. This yoga is very helpful in controlling anxiety as you relaxation and provide oxygen containing blood. Let's hope it helps you guys a lot. Kerala has become an IT hub recently. It is an attractive job which offers many perks. But the drawback of these jobs, as all of us know, is that sitting makes our body rigid and thereby resulting in back pain. So let our next topic be back pain and yoga. I invite Sri Lakshmi Sanal of Class 10B to discuss more about this topic. Good morning, respected teachers and all my friends gathered here. Uh, today, I'm going to take a small session on the topic back pain and yoga. Before moving on, can I ask you a question that, what do you guys think? Is yoga good for back pain or not? Um, is it okay for Bhavya to answer the question? Yes, Sri Lakshmi. Yes, sir. thank you, Bhavya. Bhavya is absolutely right. Yoga is very effective for reducing the back pain and also for improving the condition. Further in this session, you will come to know more about the role of yoga in mitigating the back pain. Speaking about yoga, 
we all know that it is a mind body therapy which is adopted in india and back pain is one among the most common cause of worry in adults and due to this generation's lifestyle it is also not at all an uncommon sight among the teenagers also and back pain can occur due to multiple reasons and not just because of the presence of any underlying disease it can be the result of sitting for long hours lifting heavy weights due to back postures etc and we may sit for long hours in front of our computer or tv watching our favorite tv shows programs video, videos and to, nowadays netflix and all are something which is becoming teenager craze so while doing all these activities we are constantly sitting for long hours without even moving an inch and we are not following a proper posture also so all that can result in back pain so it is our own habits and practices that are uh, if that eventually leads to back pain and living with back pain is one of the worst nightmare so if you are also dealing with back pain then yoga is the best effective tool you can ever offer yoga will teach us teach us to stretch and strengthen our muscles it is very much beneficial especially for those muscles that support our back and spine it is very ideal for ideal for maintaining back strength as well as for increasing our flexibility and it not only treats for the back pain but also relieves us from the stress that accompanies it and appropriate yoga postures called asanas will help us to relax and strengthen our back muscles as well as ab- abdominal muscles which are the key components for maintaining a healthy spine and apart from yoga there are also other treatments that you can opt for back pain such as uh, ayurvedic treatments acupuncture massages etc but all that can be very expensive and it will definitely empty our pocket but in case of yoga all that you need is just a yoga mat and even a cloth sheet will do well and a fresh atmosphere you don't have to pay anyone for doing yoga and uh, uh, so uh, yoga so one main benefit of yoga uh, is that it is very much affordable and accessible also and practicing yoga regularly at least for a few minutes per day can produce a considerable impact on our body so today i will be introducing two simple yoga poses which is very much effective for reducing the back pain and for maintaining the healthy spine the first pose that i'm going to introduce is salamba bhujangasana or the spin pose so it is actually a beginner level pose which also serves as an as an excellent warm up pose and it is a gentle back bend pose which strengthens our spine it also helps a lot to stretch our chest muscle chest shoulder as well as abdomen it is also very much effective for relieving us from the stress and also help us to rebalance the natural curve of our body so when we first sit uh, in an appropriate in an inappropriate posture for a long time it can definitely affect our body shape but this pose will help us to regain our uh, body shape the second pose that i'm going to introduce is dhanurasana so before that uh, before moving further uh, can i ask you another question that Uh, do anyone in this session know uh, how dhanurasana is been referred in english or uh, what is the other name in dhanu what is the other name in which dhanurasana is widely known for can anyone in this session answer the question hey, lakshmi is it bopos um is it ardra yes sri lakshmi yes uh, thank you ardra ardra is absolutely right it is called as bopos because while remaining stable in this position our body takes the shape of a bow so that is why it has been known as bow pose and it has multiple benefits on our body that it uh, improves our hip flexors that it opens the hip flexors which in turn improves the circulation and also reduces the lower back pain it also helps to strengthen our back then opens the shoulder from the front part of our body this help us to maintain a good posture it is also very effective for maintaining and retaining a healthy spine and yoga poses for back pain 
are not just limited only in these two poses. Apart from these poses, there are many other poses such as the Cobra pose or the Bhujangasana, Locust pose or the Shalabhasana, Extended Triangle pose or the Uttida Trikonasana, and much more which can be beneficial for the same state. So awareness of our body through yoga increases by practice. And the practice in yoga once in a while can never make a change in our body. We have to make it as our habit and a part of our daily routine. Then only it will produce some of the other benefits on our body. And these bends, stretches and twists of yoga are what our back often needs to get healthier. So we don't have to feel doubtful to just try it out. And we all are aware of the present situation. We are living in lockdown days. We are not able to see our beloved ones. And online classes may also seem a bit tiring for us. So practicing yoga, especially in a state like this, is, can be very much helpful for our body as well as for our mental health. So it immediately uplifts our mood and fills positivity in our depressed mind. So mindful practicing of yoga to some extent will help us to lead a happy and a distasteful life. I hope that I succeeded in passing some of the information related to back pain and yoga to you. And I hope that you guys found this session very informative. Next, we will watch a video of Adra Jayate demonstrating how to do spin pose as well as bow pose. Thank you. How to do Pujangasana? First, lie down on your stomach. Raise your arms under your shoulder. Inhale and lift your chest with hips remain on the floor. Breathe slowly and remain on the position for few seconds. To come out of this position, move your chin back to the floor slowly and rest your arms down by the sides. Relax. Dhanurasana. First, lie down on your stomach with your feet slightly apart and place your arms on the slide of your body. Now, fold your knees up and hold your anglets with your hands. Breathe in and lift your chest off the ground and stretch your legs up. Exhale. Hold the position for 12 to 15 seconds and concentrate on your breath. To relax, slowly bring your chest and legs back to the ground. Release your hands from the anklets and release your palms. Thank you Sri Lakshmi for explaining the topic clearly to everyone and Audra for demonstrating the poses step by step. These poses may help students and teachers during this time as we are sitting for more than three hours for online classes. The present fast food system affects our health in an adverse manner. The oily, sugary and fatty food makes us unfit. It may result in high BP and diabetics. The more we are addicted to them, the more we turn the victims of these diseases. We are now going to discuss how to come over, overcome lifestyle disease through yoga. Now, let me invite Abhinan Kiki of class 10A to explain us how to manage diabetics by yoga. A warm good morning to all. Diabetes. Diabetes is no longer a foreign name to us. Over years, the cases of diabetes have increased. This can happen to anybody, no matter what age, place or genetic history is. Poor diet and lack of exercise have fast tracked this condition into an epidemic. If it is not taken care of, then it can become a serious threat to our life. Here, I am going to speak about how to manage or prevent diabetes by yoga.
to reduce reduce levels of stress enhance mobility lower blood pressure and improve overall well being controlling mental stress is one of the key of diabetes treatment yoga can reduce stress related hyperglycemia and have a positive effect on blood glucose control yoga helps to regenerate and restore pancreatic cells by abdominal stretching yoga exercises can reduce body weight which is very vital to keep diabetes under check yoga postures help to improve insulin sensitivity which result in better glucose uptake and blood glucose reduction yoga helps to stimulate pancreas and empowers its capacity to produce insulin there are so many asanas for your and helps to upgrade the use of insulin in the body bhujangasana is no longer sorry bhujangasana is a very useful yoga in strengthening the spine and improve functionality of abdominal organs thereby supporting digestion shalabhasana is very useful in diabetic treatment as it pushes abdominal organs exercise the legs and back muscles and helps in relieving stress controlling diabetes ardha maschendrasana is a twisting posture which helps in digestion and elevated energy levels it also improves the functioning of lower abdominal organs and thus lowers glucose level in the body so it is a little bit advanced yoga pose in respect of techniques but one can learn it by following its simple steps now i am concluding my words and hope that a demonstration by fatma anwar have to do ardha matyendrasana now sit up with the legs stretched out straight in front of you keeping the feet together and the spine erect bend the left leg and place the heel of the left foot beside the right hip take the right leg over the left knee place the left hand on the right knee and the right hand behind you now to wish the waist shoulders and neck in the sequence to the right and to cover the right shoulder keep the spine erect hold and continue with gentle breaths in and out from breathing out release the right hand first release the waist then chest lastly the neck and sit up relaxed yet straight i think abhinan has some network issue it's okay thank you abhinan for explaining about diabetics can solve how yoga can solve diabetics now let me invite lakshmi sajeev of class 10c to carry on the topic how to manage bp by yoga a very warm good morning to one and all Today I'm here to present a short speech on the topic how to manage blood pressure by yoga. As we all know, the burden of high blood pressure is progressively on a rise worldwide, with India contributing to a major part of this burden. According to a research, one in five young adults in India has high blood pressure. So, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force of blood against the blood vessel walls. It is measured with two different numbers. The first or top number is called systolic pressure. It is the pressure when the heart is beat. The second or bottom number is called diastolic pressure. It is the pressure when the heart rests between the beats. Diastolic pressure is typically lower than systolic pressure. 
Both are measured in millimeters of mercury, and the normal blood pressure count is typically lower than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. When the blood pressure exceeds 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, it is called high blood pressure or hypertension. And when the blood pressure comes down below 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury, it is called low blood pressure or hypotension. High blood pressure or hypertension is caused by the constriction of arteries, which results in increased resistance to blood flow. It can lead to the rupture of an artery and internal bleeding. It is a serious condition that leads to heart attacks, strokes, and even death. You can have high blood pressure for years without any symptoms, and for this reason, it is also known as the silent killer. The risk factors include stress, overweight, usage of tobacco, too much salt in diet, diabetes, kidney diseases, family history, and the risk could also increase as you age. The symptoms are severe headache, nose bleed, fatigue or confusion, vision problems, etc. Low blood pressure or hypotension can cause dizziness or fainting, and in severe cases, it can be life-threatening. The risk factors are pregnancy, dehydration, large amount of blood loss through injuries, etc. If you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure, you might be worried about taking medication to bring your numbers down. Apart from this, you need to make some lifestyle changes. And of course, yoga is one of the best natural ways to control it. Adults who practice yoga with relaxation and breathing exercises at least three times a week may have lower blood pressure than people who won't. Yoga leaves a positive impact on your mind and body. The yogic practices of meditation and pranayama are also beneficial for people suffering from high blood pressure. It is particularly effective in reducing the diastolic number, which is the most important. However, people with high blood pressure are advised to be cautious in approaching exercises. This is generally because vigorous exercise puts stress on the cardiovascular system, including raising heart rate and blood pressure. So, before engaging in any sort of exercise program, including yoga or any type of variety, people of any sort of cardiovascular condition, including high blood pressure, should consult their physician. However, yoga asanas are not considered to be cardiovascular exercises as such. Rather than placing the focus on the cardiovascular fitness, yoga is more about achieving a balance between mind and body, energizing your body in the process. And one of the effective yoga asanas for hypertension is the Shishuasana of child pose. Shishuasana can give you relief from various factors that contribute to high blood pressure. It reduces stress and improves blood circulation throughout the body. Controlled breathing while performing this asana promotes calmness and reduces stress from neck and shoulders. It is important to note that you have to avoid practicing Shishuasana in case of any leg or knee injury if you are pregnant, if you are suffering or recently suffered from diarrhea. Now, I would like to conclude my points on Shishuasana by saying, if performed with an open mind, full body, the gravitational pull of Shishuasana will sure induce the users with a great sense of physical, mental, and emotional relief. Now, let us watch the video demonstration of Shishuasana performed by Fatima Anwar. Thank you. How to do Shishuasana? Now, sit on your heels, keeping your hips on the heels, bend forward, lower your forehead to the floor. Keep the arms alongside your body with hands on the floor, palms facing up. Gently press your chest on the thigh. Now, hold for few seconds. Slowly come up to sit on the heels and relax once again i thank abhinan and lakshmi for clearly explaining ways to overcome lifestyle diseases with help of yoga 
I'm sure many people would have find this helpful. Another health problem, which is also a result of the above mentioned reasons is change in food style. Yes, change in food styles, which result in digestive problems. Let us check what yoga can do in such cases. Let me invite Gayatri of 10B to give us more information about this topic. Yoga is a light which once lit will never dim. A very warm good morning to all. Today I am here to deliver a speech on digestive problems and yoga. We all love to hop on delicious food and who doesn't? But the trouble arises when digestion becomes a problem. Modern day life is extremely hectic and busy. Good digestion is very crucial for maintaining a healthy immune system. Abundance of junk items, it seems normal to today's generation. Constipation is a byproduct and acidity has to be there. And there are many other issues such as leaky gut, bloating and indigestion. And what do you think is the root cause for all of this? Of course, our modern lifestyle. Our modern lifestyle is often blamed for the explosion in diseases like constipation, acidity, flatulence, and so much more. And the evidence is that our ancestors didn't suffer from such ailments is hard to come up until now. The digestive system is such an outspoken topic nowadays. All the issues we face in a predetermined time period actually begins in the gut or the digestive system. Like Hippocrates said, all diseases begins in the gut and it's a true saying. The digestive system is the only organ which exposes us to the external world through the food we eat. And as we all know, our immunity is 70% from the digestive system and that's why it is of utmost importance to take care of this organ. And yoga can offer some eye-opening benefits. Have you ever wondered why our ancestors didn't suffer from ailments like constipation and bloating that we all have suffered or we all are suffering from. Through the practice of yoga, they made it possible. Yoga is a traditional practice that helps to connect mind and body to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Yoga is a key factor in improving your digestion as it helps to enhance your kidney and liver's detoxification process. It also helps in blotting by providing sufficient amount of oxygen. There are many yoga poses that can stimulate your kidney, pancreas and stomach by making them more strong and healthy. In digestion, it seems just like a casual inconvenience, but it's no longer a minor issue. That sore feeling in your gut is trying to tell you something very important. It's not normal to consistently feel bloated or a burning sensation in your stomach just after a meal, despite of what you might have thought for. Although these are some common issues that we all can face in one time or another, these are those symptoms which we all want to readily eliminate in our day-to-day -day life. Fortunately, there are various yoga postures that can aid digestion and incorporating one or more of them into your daily practice can do wonders to improve your gut's health. Namely, the Trikonasana or the Extended Triangle Pose or the Forward Triangle Pose and the Pavan Muktasana or the Wind Relieving Pose. The Trikonasana is a foundational standing pose in yoga which helps to strengthen and lengthen your hamstrings and groin while opening up your shoulders and stretching your hips. It also helps to relieve from gastritis, indigestion, flatulence and acidity. The pose also refreshes our body and thereby keeping us healthy and productive all day long. The Pavan Muktasana, it strengthens the abdominal muscles and reduces belly fat. The abdominal muscles are tensed and the internal organs are compressed, increasing blood circulation. The pose also stimulates our nerves thereby increasing the efficiency of all internal organs. The pressure on the abdomen, it releases any trapped gas in the large intestine. It is a true fact that our health depends on our gut's condition and our mind has some smart nutritional choices to make. Our yoga helps to engage our mind and body and promotes calm and serenity. 
which would urge you towards a balanced diet. This would in turn help you in your digestion. As mentioned earlier, yoga is a light which once led will never die. Yoga is a geologist who knows what to dig and what to dig for. But the digging, you must do it yourself. Hello. So hereby, I conclude my speech. And now let's look on a video demonstration of Trikonasana and Pabhanamuktasana by Fatima Anwar. Thank you and have a nice How to do Pabhanamuktasana? Lie on your back with your feet together and arms beside your body. Breathe in and exhale. Bring your right knee in towards your chest. Press the thigh on your abdomen with clasped hands. Breathe in again and exhale. Lift your head and chest of the floor. Touch your chin to your right knee. Hold it there as you take a breath in and out. On exhale, tighten the grip of your hands around your knee and the pressure against your chest. Loosen your grip, come back to the ground and relax. I am going to explain how to do Trigonasana. Stand straight with your legs apart. The distance between your legs should be a little more than the span of your shoulders. Now inhale and raise your hands straight above your head. The arm should be parallel to the ear. Exhale and bend your hip along with your hands to the right side. At this point, hold the pose with your knees and elbows straight. Hold the position for few seconds. Now inhale and relax. Straighten yourself and stand erect. And Fatima. It was a wonderful presentation and demonstration. Personally, I don't think that we all are so good at maintaining our digestive system. As a student, that most of us wake, eat, drink, and sleep untimely. What do you think is a major cause for most of life? Yes, obesity and overweight. The year-long lockdown has made all of us a bit overweight. Do you all agree? Can yoga help in weight loss? Let us see what yoga can do. As we all know, it is a major problem among most of us. Let's, let's in the, invite Devika of class 10 see what she has to say about this topic. Good morning, one and all. Today, I'm here to present a short speech on fat reduction and yoga. Fat loss is a reduction in body fat. Reducing body fat is what most people want to achieve. Fat loss is more specific than weight loss. We can lose body fat by reducing calories just like weight loss. But the quality of food we consume for fat loss is more important. By cutting fat, you may be able to eliminate health issues such as diabetics, heart disease, joint pain, a variety of cancers, high blood pressure, and dementia. In other words, get rid of fat today, you can avoid health issues in the future. Now let's see how fat get reduced. Your body must dispose of fat deposits through a series of complicated metabolic pathways. The byproduct of fat metabolism leave your body as water through your skin or as carbon dioxide when you breathe out. One type of fat, referred to as visceral fat, is a major risk factor for diabetics, heart diseases, and other major health conditions. Many health organizations use body mass index to classify weight. Here are some tips that you can follow to reduce belly fat. First is, eat plenty of soluble fiber. Avoid food that contain trans fat. Eat a high protein diet. Reduce your stress level, avoid lots of sugary food. These are some of the tips that you can follow to reduce belly fat. Do yoga have any role in fat reduction? Let's see. Practicing yoga may also help you to develop muscle tone and improve your metabolism. 
while restorative yoga isn't an especially physical type of yoga, but it still helps in weight loss. Study had found that yoga was effective in helping overweight to lose weight and abdominal fat. Doing yoga poses can burn as many calories. Practicing yoga regularly can offer several health benefits for not just body, but for the mind and soul too. Yoga postures that help in reducing belly fat are also beneficial for your entire body as they strengthen your abdominal muscle, increase your physical activity and make you feel better both inside and outside. Apart from increasing flexibility and improving muscle strength, certain yoga asanas can burn fat effectively. For adults with overweight, yoga has been shown to provide physical and mental health benefits such as reduction in joint pain, stress and muscle. There are many yoga asanas that you can do to reduce belly fat. Here I'm listing two yoga asanas for reduction of fat. Paschimottasana and Kumbhakasana. Both these yoga asanas are efficient for reduction of fat. Paschimottasana is one of the effective sitting forward bending poses that are good for belly fat. Kumbhakasana postures stimulate the calorie burning process and this asana helps in reducing belly fat and it is excellent for conjuring fat around the waist. Regular practice of asana is useful to reduce fat in various parts of our bodies. This will reduce weight and maintain body in proper health in long run. Various postures, especially forward bending, twisting, help reduce fat near abdomen. So by drinking enough water, practicing yoga, reducing refined crabs, consuming soluble fiber, you can avoid belly fat. So from this, we can conclude that yoga has many amazing benefits in our life. It helps improve a person's well-being and prevent from many diseases. So do yoga at least for 15 minutes regularly. Now let's watch a presentation video by Adra of these yoga asanas to understand it more clearly. Thank you. And How to do Pachimottasana. First, sit up with the legs stretched out straight in front of you, keeping the spine erect and toes flexed towards you. Inhale. Raise both arms above your head and stretch up. Exhale. Now, bend forward and hold your toes with your arms. Touch your elbows on the ground and your forehead on your knees. Breathe slowly. To come out of this position, stretch your arms out in front of you. Inhale, come out to the sitting position. Exhale, lower the arms. Now, how to do Kumbhagasana? First, sit in Vajrasana with your hands on your thighs. Bend forward and place your hands on the floor in front of you. Slide both the feet backward and raise the knees above the ground so that you are balancing your body weight with your two palms and toes. Slowly inhale and exhale by holding the position. To release the pose, bend your knees and bring knees to the floor. Come back to the kneeling position. Relax. Thank you Devika and Adra for clearly explaining how yoga helps in fat reduction. As a weight bearing activity, yoga stimulates bone growth and development. It also helps us to exercise easily and stress free. Yoga helps physical education in flexibility, increase in muscle strength and tone and weight reduction. Thus, yoga and physical education goes hand in hand. Now, Amit Prem of class 10A will elucidate what physical education is, its components and its connection with yoga. Good morning to one and all. Today, I'm here to present a speech on the topic physical education and yoga. Physical education is an integral part of total education process, which has its aim, the development of 
mentally, physically, emotionally, and socially fit citizen through the medium of physical activities which have been selected with the aim of realizing these outcomes. The aim of physical education. The aim of physical education should be to make every child mentally, physically, and emotionally fit and to develop in them such personal and social qualities and to help them live happily with others and to make them a better citizen. Physical fitness. It is the ability of an individual to do daily routine work without fatigue. Moreover, to participate in playful activities and still reserve enough capacity to meet any emergency. The level of physical fitness varies from person to person. It depends upon factors such as the nature of work, size, shape, structure, and age of an individual. Different physical activities requires different levels of physical fitness. There are also many components of physical fitness like speed, strength, power, flexibility, cardiovascular endurance, coordination, muscular endurance, reaction time, agility, body composition, and balance. Speed. It is the ability of a person to move a part or the whole body very quickly. It is very necessary in certain sports which require a great deal of work to be done in a short period of time. Strength. It is the ability of a muscle or a group of muscle to apply force and overcome obstruction. Yogic asanas are very useful for strengthening bones and muscles. Power. It is the ability to use muscle strength quickly. Flexibility. It is the range of the movements of the joints. Cardiovascular endurance. It is our ability of our heart and lung system to cope during an activity for a long period of time. Running a marathon is a very good example for cardiovascular endurance. Coordination. It is the working together of various movements of our body. It usually comprises of the upper and lower movements of our body working together at the same time. Muscular endurance. It is the ability of a sports person to perform a sport activity effectively without getting tired and to quickly recover from fatigue during and after the activity. Reaction time. It is how quickly a person reacts to stimuli. It is usually very important in certain physical activities. Agility. It is the ability of a person to change direction or position very quickly. It is also very important in certain physical activities. Body composition. It is about the amount of muscle and joints in our body. Balance. It is about equilibrium or stability. Now let us discuss about the importance of yoga in physical activities. Through asanas or body postures, it is possible for an individual to maintain his or her body health. Health is a very important factor of yoga. Without health, it is impossible for a person to free his mind from the It is impossible for a person to free his mind from the feeling of pain and to concentrate on other aspects of yoga. Yoga can help a person to maintain and improve his health by strengthening the muscles, improving the flexibility of the joints, and regulating other systems like respiration, circulation, nervous, and glandular systems. Yoga can develop an all round development of an individual and help him to lead a carefree and contented life. Now let us discuss about the role of yoga in sports. Physiological fitness is one of the most basic requirements for participation and good results in sports. Yoga can contribute significantly in this direction by helping the sports person to maintain his or her good health. Yogic asanas and pranayam have been evolved to exercise every muscle, nerve, and gland of the human body. Yoga, yoga can stimulate the endocrine glands and regulate the respiratory, circulatory, excre excretory, nervous, and other systems. 
yogic asanas can help us to make our joints healthy and develop flexibility in the human body the development of flexibility and strength of our muscles can joints can not only help the sports person to perform well but also to prevent his injuries achievements in sports can only be achieved by constant practice yogic asanas and pranayam can help to reduce tension and soothe our mind it creates a diversion from the ordinary lifestyle and reduce boredom therefore yoga serves the purpose of maintaining our health and reducing tension for these reasons yoga is gaining worldwide popularity so we can safely say that physical education has a vast scope and by following these activities one can perform an all round development of himself so by concluding i can say that yoga has a very huge role in physical education that's all so thank you thank you amit for sharing us how yoga and physical education is connected and how important the role of yoga is in physical health now if anybody have any doubts you are free to ask excuse me uh, so uh, myself parvati so my question is to sri bhadra uh, so sri bhadra what kind of food item should be avoided by thyroid patients yeah that's a very good question parvati uh the food items to be avoided by thyroid patients include uh, vegetables such as broccoli cabbage cauliflower uh, fatty food items including meat and all the fried items avoid drinking alcohol avoid sugary foods such as chocolate cake and avoid processed and frozen food items i hope it's clear to you yes sri bhadra thank you you are welcome parvati Excuse me my name is Fatima I also doubt have a doubt about thyroidism that what are the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and hyperthyroidism uh the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and hyperthyroidism includes excessive amount of sweating irregular heart beats and unexpected weight loss I hope it's clear Uh, i request all of you to mute your mic except for the ones who are who want to ask the questions excuse me i'm sri lakshmi sri lakshmi your mic is muted excuse me I am Sri Lakshmi. The program was very informative, and we learned a lot of new things from it. But I would really like to ask a question to Lakshmi. How is yoga actually um, helpful in managing hypertension? Uh, can you please answer my question? Um, sure, Sri Lakshmi. Yoga is particularly effective in reducing the diastolic number, which is the most important. Also, yoga is helpful for hypertension patients in many ways, like reducing stress, anxiety, obesity-related issues. Thank you. You are welcome, Sri Lakshmi, and, and thank you for asking the question. By the way, if anybody else has any other doubts, I'd be really happy to help you. Excuse me, my name is Sai Bishai. I also have a doubt to Lakshmi. Can you mention some other yoga asanas other than Shishwasana for hypertension? It would be really helpful if you mention so. Sure, Abish. There are plenty more yoga asanas other than Shishwasana for hypertension, like the Adho Mukha Swasana, Pakshi Mukha Asana, Utta Asana, and so on. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody have any other doubts? Hi, Sri Lakshmi. I'm Niharika. Your session was really interesting, and we were able to learn a lot of things about uh, yoga and how through yoga we can cure back pain. But something that I would like to ask you is that 
can yoga cause any difficulties or injuries to our backbone so could you please explain it um yeah sure so uh, if we are if in some cases it can damage our back so if we are practicing those postures which are not suitable for our present physical condition uh, then it definitely it will make our condition even more worse for example if we have a lower back pain then we must always prefer those postures uh, which helps to in, which is appropriate for lower back pain that which helps to improve our condition rather than making it even more difficult for us and also so that is one main thing that we all have to keep in mind and make sure that we consult an expert beforehand and uh, if we are no diagnosed with any serious back problems such as muscle strains or spinal cord injuries uh, then it is better not to try out any intense yoga poses especially if we are a beginner to this field and we are practicing yoga just for the sake of relaxation and for increasing flexibility uh, make sure that we stick on to those poses that we are comfortable to do so while doing any poses if we feel uncomfortable immediately we have to drop it out otherwise it can lead to much further complications over twisting and over stretching can also have an adverse effect on our back and also one more thing is that uh, while performing any postures uh, we must uh, do it in a proper manner that by following all the guidelines properly so these are some of the things that we have to keep in mind while performing yoga otherwise yes it can damage your back in some cases so i hope that i made it very clear uh, is there any more doubts niharika no doubts and thank you thank you so much for detailing thank you anyone else have any other doubts abrami your audio is not working if anybody else have a question you can continue excuse me myself first now my doubt is also to sri lakshmi uh, sri yes, lakshmi please. is there any difference between the spin pose and cobra pose um yes uh, in case of spin pose that is the salamba bhujangasana and cobra pose that is a bhujangasana may look somewhat similar to us in the at the very first glance uh, it is true that there are certain similarities between both these poses that both of them are back bend exercise and the way we do them is also somewhat similar not exactly but somewhat but there are also certain differences so while doing spin pose uh, more of the strength is engaged on the upper part of the body than the lower part of the body and uh, it is our elbow that comes below the shoulder so more force will be exerted on our arms but in case of uh, cobra pose the back bend is much deeper than that of the spin pose and it is our hands that comes below our shoulder uh, and which allows our arms to get extended and if you are looking for uh, those poses which are appropriate for back pain uh, then you can opt any of these poses it is totally fine as both these poses are equally beneficial for uh, reducing the back pain and also for improving the condition so i hope that i have given a satisfying answer is there any more doubts prashna no sri lakshmi it's clear thank you thank you do anyone have any more doubts uh excuse me uh, my name is meenakshi and bhavya i have a doubt related to your topic that uh, is a bridge pose comfortable for everyone no meenakshi people who are suffering from uh, neck pain back pain or shoulder pain can avoid doing this and also if anyone is facing any serious health issues can do this only after consulting with concerned people i hope it's clear to you yeah it's clear thank you so much bhavya you're welcome hi bhavya this is adha your presentation was so good information so my question is what are the other benefits of pranayama 
Okay, Sardra. Apart from uh, reducing stress, pranayama also helps to maintain lung function, brain function, and blood pressure. It also helps to improve concentration as well as memory power. Is that clear? Yes, Sophia. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hello, Devika. I'm Amgaja. Uh, thank you for your presentation and your ideas and thoughts about yoga had a good impact on the way of thinking. Uh, but I have a doubt that uh, yoga can can yoga be really effective in removing extra fat? Yes, uh, yoga will help you to develop muscle tone and improve your metabolism. And yoga isn't an especially physical type of yoga, but it still helps in weight loss. I hope it's clear. Is there any more doubts? Uh, yeah, I want to clear one more thing that uh, what are the other benefits of Kumbhakasana other than fat reduction? Uh, Kumbhakasana or the plank pose, it strengthens the shoulders and arms. It, it strengthens the muscle along the spine. It tightens the abdominal muscles and also it helps to build stamina and endurance. I hope it made clear. Yes, Devika, thank you so much. And thank you for your question. Excuse me, uh, I am Atulia and my question is to Gayatri. Uh, could you please explain why good digestion is very crucial for maintaining a healthy immune system? Yes, Atulia, I really appreciate your question. Good digestion is very much crucial for a good immune system. Our immunity is 70% from the digestive system. And that's why it is of utmost importance to take care of our digestive system. The digestive system is the only organ which exposes us to the external world through the food we eat. And if you have an unhealthy digestive system, then you would probably have a low immune system as all the nutrients would not be absorbed, which would give you a low immunity, which would make you more prone to diseases. So I hope so the doubt has been clarified. Yes, Gautri, thank you. My pleasure. Is there any more doubts which needs to be clarified? I'm Uma and my question is to Gaitri. Uh, so how does this model lifestyle affect this system? Uma, could you please repeat the question? Please repeat the question. Can you hear me? Uma, sorry for saying, I uh, think your network is having some sort of problem. It's okay. If anybody else have any question, you can continue with the next questions. Do anyone have any more questions? I think all the doubts have been cleared now and I thank you for asking questions and answering them. Hope all of you have gained something from today's program as the all Please make the man perfect. Practice yoga every day and miracles are waiting for you. We have come to the end of this session. This indeed was an informative and engaging learning experience for all of us. The entire program has been recorded and will be uploaded on the school's YouTube channel. We will be sharing a Google form to collect feedback about this webinar. I would like to welcome Maluga to extend gratitude to all for the opportunity provided. Good morning, one and all join here on this wonderful and peaceful occasion of Yoga Day. I would like to present the vote of thanks. It is a matter of pride for me that I got the chance to thank everyone present here. First of all, I would like to thank our principal, Sumina Ma'am, for giving us such a nice opportunity to conduct a great program today. I would also like to thank our vice principal, Archana Ma'am, who has always guided us to follow the right path. Then, I would like to thank our teachers, Santhi Ma'am, Mopina Ma'am, Shamli Ma'am, Sujada Ma'am, and
And I would really like to give a special thanks to Monisha ma'am and Ishma ma'am for giving all the technical support without which we could not have presented a great program like this in a situation that we are currently facing. Then I would like to thank all the participants who had worked for the success of this program. I would also like to thank Sahil Sabit and Malavika CD who prepared the PPT presentations. Also, I thank Varun who coordinated the program very well, edited the videos and helped all the participants. Last but not least, I would like to extend my thanks to all the teachers, parents and my dear friends who are present here and spend their valuable time for watching this program. So keep in mind that practicing yoga will help us to live a peaceful life and it will work wonders in your life. At last, as everyone know, we are currently facing a pandemic, COVID-19. So everyone, please stay home, stay safe and take care of each other. Finally, I am concluding my words with an inspiring quote by BKS Iyengar. Yoga is a light with one slit will never dim. The better you practice, the brighter the flame. Once again, I thank you all for your presence. Thank you. Once again, I repeat, you can watch the entire program in school's YouTube channel. Also, we will be sharing a Google form to collect the feedback about this webinar. I kindly request everyone to keep give their feedbacks. It would be really nice if you all will give feedbacks. Thank you for your cooperation here.